Welcome, guys. And so um, we're having some behind the scenes fans with um, my guest, Paul G. O. D., aka Paul God. He's He's an international producer, singer, rapper, but it's all on hip-hop. So, guys, you have to follow us. We encourage you to follow us and share and like our page. On Facebook, we are the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. So we also encourage you to disregard any post that comes from a GBC handle that is not verified. Our Facebook is verified, and so there's a blue tick. And so kindly follow our page and share every content on there not just while we are live um, between six and nine but then afterwards um, after the show you can send your comments there's there are lots of behind the scenes interesting stuff and videos you can pick up from there as well and interact with the team we are live on YouTube on YouTube you can find us as the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation on YouTube, also www.gbcghanaonline.com. And on Twitter, we are the GBC Ghana. We are verified on Twitter, the GBC Ghana, and IG, GBC, Instagram, I mean, GBC Online. We are verified as well. So disregard any post that's not come from, that doesn't come from a GBC handle, which isn't verified, guys. Paul, I'm sorry for the long intro. I had to put that out there. <laughs> Welcome to the studios of GVC News Thank you. and then breakfast as Thank well. You, you, ma you match with our couch. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> so you know what? We are going to have a lot of fun today. Yeah. You know, we usually have um, highlights. We have Afro beats. Mm -hmm. Right now we have lots of different things that have Afro on it. Yeah. But when it comes to hip-hop, we do know that we have a few hip-hop artists here in Ghana. Okay. Um, I'm going to name him. Okay. I'm not going to mention his name, but you know who I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, for the likes of you who form a small proportion of our music industry, what's happening when it comes to hip-hop? Will hip-hop be fully, fully accepted in Ghana? Okay, so, um, actually, in Ghana, there, there, there's... Um, there are people down here who actually like hip hop, and what people don't know is that um, hip hop was um, born in 1973, um, in the Bronx, as in the USA. You seem to know your history. Oh yes, and um, actually, people don't know that uh, JW Ambley started hip hop before 1973. You so mean in some context, people don't know. A lot of people. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. So um, initially, um, JDB mm -hmm. is the originator of hip hop. That's going to be very, very debatable. Yes, I know. I hope you have mm -hmm. your facts and evidence to back that claim. Oh, yes, yes, a lot. <laughs> JDB is, is a friend to our couch, mm -hmm. and so we might want to get him on that conversation. Yes. But will it be fully, fully recognized here or accepted? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. There's a thing about um, the Ghana, the community in Ghana in general. Um, I think um, we are still learning how to appreciate our own. So it might take some time before they could actually um, accept that fact. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so in a nutshell, um, who is Paul G.O.D., a.k.a. Paul God? Okay, so Paul G.O.D., um, I'm an artist, hip-hop artist and producer. I'm a creative and yeah and um, a nice person <laughs> obviously yes okay how did you start music how did you why did you decide to become a musician okay first of all i fell in love with um the hip-hop crafts the hip-hop culture who's your favorite hip-hop artist wow wow okay my favorite hip-hop artist is I, I i don't think i have a favorite let me let me put okay. it away I, I don't think i have a favorite one um, of but I, I grew up um, listening to um, KRS One, um, Big Daddy Kane, um, Slick Rick, okay. um, like you know, um, yeah, and a whole lot, you know. Okay. But um, I started listening to the people that actually started hip hop, not like um, um, from Tupac, B B I G, no, 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 below that, okay. below that belt. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And tell us your entry into the Ghanaian music industry. Um, are we are we acceptive of your craft? Um, how do people rate you? What what's the feedback you get when you tell people that hey, I do hip hop? Okay, the feedback I get for like for the first time 
first impressions. They, they say, okay, so hip hop in Ghana, uh, there's no audience for that and all. But I think in general, whatever you have, with whatever craft you have, is the wisdom you use to um, actually uh, showcase your, your, your talent. So what I do is that I've, I've actually done a lot of shows in Ghana here, like big shows in Ghana here. But what I do is I fuse the hip hop with jazz. Okay. And perform it so, you know, I have my own audience down here. Okay. Yeah. So hip hop is, um, we, we, is, is, is a genre that we, it's not really accepted or not known to a huge majority in Ghana. Yes. Jazz as well belongs to a select few. Exactly. And so you are, you are mixing two genres that yes. aren't particularly um, friendly. Um, not necessarily. That's a video or one of your shows. Yes. Which yeah. one? Which show is that? So this is uh, Republic Spirit um, last year. Okay. So we, we have another one this year. Okay. And um, this, this was um, just after uh, Ifia and Omali's um, program. So, yeah, that's one of it. Okay. One of my shows. Yes. So you, you're you mixing two genres that aren't particularly um, popular mm -hmm. to our part of the world. And how do you survive? Would you call yourself an emerging artist? Are you an already made artist? Are you a celebrity? Are you a superstar? How would you clarify? I mean, which bracket do you put yourself in? Um, I wouldn't put myself in any brackets. I would say I'm an artist. That's what I would say. Okay. In general, because um, people might not know me down here, you know, I might not have like a large audience down here, but people know me outside Ghana, and um, it's because of a few things that I noted earlier in my career, um, things like uh, publishing, copyright, intellectual property. Um, down here, we don't really have um, a proper system. I think we are still picking up. Our system is still going to get there, where artists could actually get the royalties um, that they deserve from every, every from what they produce yes please. that's what i think okay yeah right so how do you intend to change the status quo here how do you intend to make hip-hop more attractive to us because you're making music for Ghanaians. yes not necessarily Ghanaians, music in general music for in everyone. general but now you want Ghanaians to accept you we, I mean, there's, there's a fraction of Ghanaians that love hip-hop, but okay. how are you going to make us, the whole Ghana, accept you and your craft and your genre? Okay, so I have an album um, titled uh, Dream Africa. So I've fused hip-hop with Afrobeats, not Afrobeats, Afrobeats. Okay. So I've fused that um, to, to make it um, acceptable to people in Africa. Okay. When you say people in Africa, I find it very, in general. very yeah, right. So, are you a rapper? Are you a singer? Okay, what, so when when you get on a beat, what exactly do you do? I rap. You rap. I rap, but um, I rap. But in case I I do a song with someone who sings, I have to make sure the person is on point. So I write for the person. So I'm a writer. Okay. So writer, producer, yeah. rapper, artist, the creative person in general. Yeah. Okay. So. Because we have yeah. you here, mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. you're a rapper, hip-hop artist, mm -hmm. let's have you, it's, it's freestyle you call it, no? <laughs> okay. So, can Ghanaians have a feel of um, Paul God, Paul G-O-D, the okay. hip-hop artist? Okay. Right. All right. Um, okay. So, which one would you prefer? Like, a ladies something or a guy? Anything, you choose. Okay. All right. Just make sure that it's, it's hot enough so that <laughs> you, can, you can make me a fan <laughs> of hip-hop. Okay. All right. So, yo. In your dreams, perfect you, I relate to anyone I could replace. So I imagine my passion staring right back in your face. No spoken words, but images. We was just the two of us, buy me an option. Trigger love, bullish hearts, and God we trust. Not enough to wipe the tears over facial. Heavenly days I embrace you. It's another time I remember return a ways up in a place far away from there. But here my ears position, my eyes possession, my heart played weapon. Grabbing safe, you got my arms open, you blow up my mind. When pipes extra always blow in the climate. Not from violin by talent, bullets was coupling, shows doubling, shooting to the peak of a heart desire, man. In the state of generations, I carried up her bosom 
um, piercing the lips against stardom. Stevie's eyes did one the kind of keys his fingers laid onto. Mm -hmm. Come reverse his character. Fred was too young to grow with us. My mm -hmm. heart in seven figures. You perfect good dread this lady. Your heart in seven figures. I heard that one because it had to do with <laughs> figures. <laughs> Ladies, okay. So what should Ghanaians expect from you, Paul? Mm. What, what should we expect? I mean, we are not supposed to call you an emerging artist, um, a household name. You're an artist. What should we expect from you? What, sh what, what are you going to come in to do that's, that's different from what everybody else is doing? Okay, I would say um, great music, a fusion of um, blues, jazz, um, hip life. When is your next concert? Um, okay, my next concert is this um, next month. Next month? Yes. Is it here in Ghana? Yes, here in Ghana. Okay. Yeah. You might want to tell us more about it. I'm, I'm, I'm particularly looking forward to come because <laughs> I want to see so it's, and feel. It's, it's titled um, The Listen Concert, and I'm doing it with uh, um, a percussionist, a okay. Kofana, okay. and then Nasab Jr. Okay. Yes. And it's, it's, it's going to be big, like huge. It's a virtual concert, actually. We'll, we'll talk, you give us the details, get into the end of the show. But okay. I know you are a brain to pick on when it comes to publishing, something a lot of people don't know. I mean, behind, before, uh, before <laughs> we came on, we were talking a little about publishing yeah. them. And that's one of the things that um, is like a big challenge to most of our artists here because people just become musicians and half of the time they don't know the craft they don't know that it is an actual job so you might want to tell us a little about publishing okay when it comes to music so first of all i would like to say when it comes to music music is not um just uh, entering a studio and recording and mm -hmm. using a track for two or three people to hear it. or putting your songs on spotify or itunes and that's it no that's no music Mu there's when it comes to music you have the music itself and you have the business of the music itself two of these things make music so now um what most of our artists are doing down here is to just put their songs on um you know uh, the streaming apps. yeah the streaming um platforms and that's it then they're on television and you know there's a done deal actually they need to get publishers that's where publishing comes in so publishing is um, a thing where it, 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 it's, it's a system that gets you your royalties of what creative arts you do, the particular creative arts you do. Um, so normally what artists have to do is not just stop at the point where they distribute, on a, um, they do distribution, but then get publishers. An um, example of publishers are BMI, CSAC, um, ASCAP, so that they could get royalties of whatever content they produce. And it cuts across board, whether the person is a videographer, um, the person is a musician, um, content creator. In general, it cuts across. Every creative person needs to get a publisher. A publisher. Yeah. Um, if you throw more light on that, what exactly, assuming I'm a musician, mm -hmm. a rapper, um, I'm signed on to a management label, I I stream my music on two or three streaming apps. Yeah. Why do I need a publisher? What exactly would a publisher do for me? Okay, for example, um, you put your songs on streaming platforms. Of course, you, you would boost it on Instagram, Facebook, and all. Let's say I put it on Boomplay. Boomplay. Okay. okay. So when you put your song on Boomplay, you sell on Boomplay. Mm. People listen, stream your your mm. song, listen. You get the money of you know but then here's the case where um you go to parties and you hear um songs people playing songs around you listen to the radio anybody can just take your song any dj can take your song and then play it actually when um a dj is playing your song you're supposed to get money off it you don't go to the store and buy um let's say detergent okay so and then take detergent home use it give it to your your next door neighbor the person uses it then a different person from nowhere comes to your house pick it and leaves your house with it you know so you must get, mm -hmm. let's pause on that so assuming mm -hmm. i'm i'm a dj and i'm i'm playing at an event in kaswa okay. and i play ochiame kwame's music okay what does that mean behind ochiame's mm -hmm. blind side and i play his music in kaswa okay initially when you are rendering so doing music is like rendering a service 
So anytime someone plays your music, the person is supposed to pay for what the person is listening to. So if a DJ is playing Ochami's song outside, uh, possibly the DJ might have paid his quota for getting his song. You don't know where, where he got it from. Because sometimes um, you can publish on streaming platforms. A lot of musicians don't know that too. So when you have a publisher on the streaming platform, then you've already collected your quota from whoever has downloaded your song or, you know. Right. Exactly. So he could play the song. On the other side, it might also mean that Oshami Kwame might not have a publisher. So they can pick your song and play it anyway. Um, someone, you know, TikTok and the rest, someone can just, uh, you know, dance, put your song behind, and you are getting nothing for it. Exactly. Okay. So um, how do we make this information accessible to um, other creative persons who do not know that they need to get published regardless? Okay. So um, I, I also do um, some programs in Ghana here for all schools. Um, I've done a couple of them with uh, Art Life Matters. That's with uh, Mr. Eric Jari. It's actually a huge program where celebrities come together to educate um, senior secondary schools in Ghana about um, that's based on career guidance and all. So anytime I go for um, programs like that, I make sure they know that it's not just about the music, but then you have to know about publishing. So as much as possible, any interview I have, I make sure they get educated about publishing so that they don't take the wrong steps. Because in Ghana, as it stands now, everybody wants to, you know, be in the limelight where, okay, I see Sakode, I see Ochiame Kwame, and it's all flashy, and I, I want to be famous, but they don't have any retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Publishing mm -hmm. is a musician's retirement plan. Say that again. Publishing is a, a musician's, musician's retirement, retirement plan. plan. That's good. Okay. I wish we could have more time <laughs> and speak more because, <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, definitely. We'll have, music business. Yeah, let's talk <laughs> right. about music as a business. Maybe we'll have a couple of panelists as well. So what, what should we expect from now to um, the end of the year from your camp? Okay, um, great music. Um, I've produced a couple of albums as well um, in the U.S., uh, in Europe. It should be out soon, so... Mm. Hey, you keep saying you're in Europe. I mean, what, what, what do in Ghanaians, Ghana, yeah. what, what should we expect oh, from you? I've, I've produced like a couple of albums down here too. So, um, Wh which, who are some of the people you've worked with? Which okay, albums the, have the, you The God produced? of Poetry. We recorded uh, two albums mm. um, this year. It's not out yet, but it's done. So we will be releasing it soon. Um, I'm working on Guillotine Bar's album. I've, I've done a couple for Akan as well. Yeah, Akan. And um, yeah. Just great music. Okay. So tell us about your upcoming concert. Wow. Okay. So it's, it's, it's called a listen concert. And it's a listening concert. Listen. Listen concert. Concert. And I'm doing it with uh, Akofna and uh, Nassar Junior and with a BPM band. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's, it's going to be live. Okay. And yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. We might feature um, some great talents on as well. And mm -hmm. um, like Kwamina. From our life, yeah. and I mean, it's, it's going to be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. do, awesome. do, do you have a date set up yet? Um, not me. Really. Oh, right. we'll have you back in here when we are talking yeah. about music as a business, yeah. and then you can give us the filler on where to meet. Is it going to be in the Christmas period? Yes, definitely. Right, if you weren't producing, if you weren't rapping, if you weren't into hip hop, what would you do? Then? Okay, so I work, I don't just do hip hop. Right. So um, it's, it's a thing for all musicians. Like, get a business, you know. What do you do? Ooh, okay, so I'm a corporate guy. <laughs> okay. It's hard to believe, but I work at the business executive in Africa. And um, yeah, that's what I do. I'm a hmm. creative person, of course. Well, but we like the, we like oh, the no. switch. <laughs> it fits in perfectly. Just follow me on Instagram, the real Paul God. Yes. Yes. So Tell us. Follow here. Before we let you go, Hello. tell us how you use social media. Social media? Yes. 